All right. <clears throat> this is <clears throat> Ask Me Anything, Answering Your Questions, Take One. Well, there isn't really going to be another take. <clears throat> All right. What's up, guys? I'm Brian Sakawa. You're watching He Spoke Style. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I put out a call on Instagram for you guys to ask me anything you want, and I would answer those questions. So here we are. We're just going to dive right into it. Rob's going to read them off camera, and I'll do my best. What do you think about Carmina Shoemaker? Carmina Shoes, I think they're really good. I own a pair of their uh, leather penny loafers. I bought them actually in, in Barcelona. I think they're really great for the price point, very well made, and they last. Where can I get a good, casual, unstructured navy blazer? <laughs> I think you're probably thinking uh, you want to get something off the rack. So my best advice for getting something off the rack would be Suit Supply. They have great fabrics. It's a, a pretty decent price point. Um, if you wanted to do made to measure, I would look into some of those options. I think Michael Andrews Bespoke is a great option. Alan David. There's a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, we can have a discussion in the comments about which ones you guys like best, but obviously you know my preferences. When did you start your interest in fashion? I think I have always sort of understood the role that how you dress plays in how you operate in the world. So, you know, from a, from a very early age, I always tell the story that when my father, my father used to play old James Bond movies for me. So obviously that's kind of cliche at this point. I think there are a lot of people that have that James Bond kind of moment where they see, you know, he's like dresses well and there's all the cool gadgets and stuff. But I don't know, from like a very early age, I just sort of, I felt the power of how you dress and how that affects how people deal with you in the world. And not only that, but how it can make you feel as well. Is there such a thing as a perfect watch for every occasion? Yes. Do you have any particular style inspiration? <clears throat> style inspirations for me. Like style icons, we can go through a few of those. Uh, I say definitely James Bond to start. Then, of course, folks like Cary Grant and Fred Astaire, because like not only did those guys dress really well, but they were also extremely talented. Uh, so that is really interesting to me as well. More sort of current. Uh, I would say John Paolo Aliata, my friend from Milan, right over there on the wall. <laughs> and uh, let's see, let me pick one more. I'm going to say Andreas Vinus, who is a, a guy I've never met before, but I follow him on Instagram. I think we have a very similar style. Definitely check him out. What's your emergency go-to outfit? Emergency go-to outfit. Depends on the season, I think, but I think maybe talking about the outfit that I always pretty much wear to the airport is a good good one. So that is uh, a light tan cable knit sweater by Reese, my black Levi's 511s, white Common Project sneakers, and then depending on the season, I'll switch up the coat. And I like to wear a sweater because it's usually kind of cold on the planes. So I don't know. That's my emergency go-to outfit. But for living in the world, I would say my uniform is either a navy suit or, you know, uh, charcoal flannel pants, navy blazer, white shirt. You really can't go wrong there. What do you think of Ralph Lauren's outfit at the RL50 anniversary show? I think it was quintessentially Ralph. I mean, this is something he wore. I think the outfit you're talking about is... He has on a six-button low double-breasted jacket, like a tuxedo jacket, and a white shirt with a formal bow tie and light wash jeans. There were a couple pictures I saw of him at that event. I think he had on some like neon sneakers, but then some other photos he has on like his cowboy boots. And I mean, you can't argue with Ralph Lauren. He's the man. What are your essential fashion or style books? Dressing the Man, I'm looking around the room right now as I'm doing this. Dressing the Man by Alan Flesser is absolutely indispensable. If you ha only have one book, that's the one you got to have. It really is 
the Bible of style. Alan Flesser wrote the book on it, quite literally. Your favorite type of shoe? Hmm. Can I say two? I'll say, <laughs> for casual, it's a pair of just plain minimal white sneakers. And for, uh, like, dressier, I would say I tend to lean towards the, uh, like, dark brown double monk strap. Why aren't you at Pity Womo 95? I couldn't go. We just got a new puppy. Give me a break. <laughs> just kidding. Question mark. I'm not sure I know how to answer that one. <laughs> how do you get brands to consider working with you? Not a paid gig, but to start building a relationship. I would say that if you are doing something like this or, or you're thinking of getting into this, if there's a particular brand that you really, really love, just find out who the PR person is. Write to them. Tell them, hey, like I'm a really big fan of your brand. I would like to you know, feature you in some way and just take it from there. Opera cape with white, with black tie, white tie. It's an excellent look, if a little garish. Hey, if you can pull it off, I think that's great. Actually, my friend Steve Norsch, who is the snob report on Instagram, had some photos around New Year's time with uh, a cashmere cape that he wore. Pretty cool, very, uh, very uh, statement making, and it looked awesome on him. What advice would you give to a person trying to do what you do? Mm. I actually did a video on this called How to Be a Style Blogger, so I would recommend checking that out for some more in-depth information. Um, I would say, you know, basically, you know, do what you love, follow your passion, only be who you are. Do not try to be someone else, and don't expect success overnight. You really got to work hard. Could you talk about your car slash car plans for the future? Classic <laughs> car incoming? Uh, my father is the one with the classic cars. He has three um, all original Ford Mustangs, uh, two from 1966 and one from 1968. We did a, a video where my dad showed his cars. We'll put a link to that. Um, for me, I drive a BMW 535 XI. It's from 2013. Um, I love it. It's like the perfect car for me. It's not too big. It's still got that sportiness of the BMW. Next cars, I don't know. I've kind of like been a BMW guy for, I don't know, how long? Six, seven years? But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, lo I like BMW, so probably stick with that. Maybe a, a 7 Series at some point. <laughs> how is it possible that Rob is so good at everything that he does and yet maintain such an amazing degree of humility. <laughs> did, did that comment really show up in there? <laughs> yeah. Well, Rob, Rob, MacGyver, <laughs> Rob MacGyver, I have known for 20 years. He was the officiant at my wedding. He's obviously been, um, he is one of the reasons he, that we have He Spoke Style today. Um, one of my best friends, so, and w one of the nicest people I've ever met. How was that? It's amazing. <laughs> Give us more watch content, please, especially of the 5711. Uh, this one? There it is. <laughs> I did not know these questions beforehand. I uh, just had this on. But uh, never fear, a watch collection video is coming up, and we are going to continue to do videos like the one we did with the IWC Ingenieur where we style different watches in different ways. What is your favorite watch in your collection and why? Ooh. I feel like sort of cornered here because I know my wife is going to watch this. And if I don't say the Cartier Tank American, I could get in trouble. But <laughs> I, I, I mean, they're all special to me. That one in particular, the Cartier Tank American, it's the 100th anniversary of the tank um, version. And that one is special, um, which I'll talk about more in the watch collection video, but um, because that was uh, her gift to me for our wedding day. If an outfit could describe you the best, which one would it be? Um, I mean, just like what I would consider a basic uniform. Uh, Mid-gray flannel pants, white button-up shirt, or like a blue microstripe or something. Oh, I know. I changed my mind. Mid-gray flannel pants, denim shirt, 
navy grenadine tie and probably some sort of um, brown patterned blazer with either brown suede Belgian shoes or brown double monks. Man. Can you please do a watch collection video? <laughs> Coming up. Your grail watch? Oh, man. Grail watch. <clears throat> I mean, I have... As you'll see in the watch collection video, I'm not like... I don't have a ton of vintage stuff. But vintage, I would say an Explorer 1016 or a 5513 Submariner. Modern, a Langa 1, rose gold or pink gold as I think they call it. Um, the AP Royal Oak 15202, 39 millimeters, gold, yellow gold, yellow gold dial. And the Patek Philippe Aquanaut Travel Time 5164. I asked for your grail watch, not seven different watches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> How did you get into, spokes, into bespoke suiting? What inspired you? <clears throat> I mean, it was just sort of like a natural progression of the industry that I'm in. You know, I, I, there are sort of like limited off-the-rack options. And once you try a made-to-measure or bespoke and you work with someone, and they really dial in your pattern, there's nothing like it. As an 18-year-old, <clears throat> how do you slowly pursue men's suiting as a career? Sort of like you do. Man, I don't know. I mean... Hmm, that's a tough question. I don't really know how to answer because I don't want to say, like, <clears throat> don't go to college. Just, like, take pictures of yourself and put them on Instagram and hope that you get popular because that's, like, totally... Um, I know it's, like, the world we live in now, but I don't want to encourage that kind of thing. If you love it, you know, like... Try to, uh, I would say, maybe try to apprentice or, you know, go to school for for uh, menswear, learn about pattern making, learn about all the finer points about tailoring. Go to London, like meet up with some people who like really are in the business in Savile Row, sweep the floors, do whatever you have to do to like get in and learn all that you can about it. How many watches do you own? Uh, there are 10 that you will see in the collection. Um, there are a few that I didn't include, but um, I would say 10. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Conor McGregor's style? I have no thoughts on Conor McGregor's style. It's good, because if you gave the wrong ones, he'd beat your ass. Oh, All right. <laughs> totally. Yes. <laughs> Got that one right. <laughs> thoughts on Tom Ford? I mean, I think Tom Ford, as a man, is super elegant, very sexy, and I think as a brand, Tom Ford, like, like the brand is the expression of him as a person. I've never met, met him in person, but from what, from what I see, like, that's just my perception. I think the stuff, his stuff is very classic. There's always like a little twist on it that I like. So it's, it speaks to me as someone who always says that their style is classic with a modern sensibility. What was the watch that made you serious about collecting watches? <clears throat> hmm. I mean, once I got bit by the bug, the first like, like quote unquote nice watch that I had was my uh, Datejust. Uh, 116234 and then after that I got the GMT Master 1675 so I mean if you're a watch person there you know that like once you go down that hole like there's no stopping <laughs> so what's the hardest thing you have <clears throat> to do every day Whew. not get mad when we're recording a video and Robin's walking around in the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good answer. <laughs> a bit late to the party, but how would you dress for a vacation in southern France slash French Riviera? Easy. I would I would watch to catch a thief and cop uh, either one of Cary Grant's outfits in that. 
Why don't you prefer Tom Ford <clears throat> for your dinner jackets and tuxedo? Well, whenever... I mean, I love Tom Ford stuff, but, you know, I was able to have my tuxedo and dinner jacket made especially for me to my exact specifications. Um, and if you watch the wedding tuxedo video, you can see that I was very particular about stuff. And you don't really get that control over every single piece of the jacket or suit when you are buying off the rack. If you were to buy a suit for under $250, <clears throat> where would you shop? I would not buy a suit for under $250. I would save that $250 and try to save up for a suit that was actually of good quality. At a $250 price point, you're going to get a bad suit, period. So you've been in the fashion industry, and how did you start? Hmm. I've been doing this for about six years, and I started just because, you know, there wasn't a website that really spoke to me. So uh, we created that website, and here we are six years later. What is your favorite car of all time? <laughs> favorite car of all time? Ah. Uh, I saw this amazing Aston Martin DB Zagato when I went to the Concorso de Eleganza a couple years ago. And that car was amazing. It, it, it was cool. I'll, have to, I'll throw a picture up uh, that I took of it when we were there. Um, also, the, the Ralph Lauren Bugatti is, I think it's from 29. Yeah. Yeah, that car is pretty badass. <laughs> Uh, how would you dress if you were a student at university? All the best for your future. Oh man, I mean, I think, I feel like when you're a student, like, the day-to-day -day sort of needs to be practical. Because like, right, you're there and you're doing a lot and you're just busy all the time. I, like, I look back at my college days and I'm like, how did I even survive? Like, I can't even like fathom like the amount of stuff that I was doing and information I had to cram. So like, dressing well or at least you know putting the time into it was like not my main focus so I would say like find those outfits that uh, are simple like have the great basics like you have some great selvage jeans some navy pants white white shirt um, gray pants a navy blazer maybe a blazer with some pattern and then with that kind of thing you can really mix and match so it, it's very easy to choose limit your options and you'll be doing very well this follows on pretty nicely. With two suits and a couple of shirts, you've got a lot of outfits. What should the, like, how should the details be uh, combined? So I would, I would, <clears throat> for the suits, I would have one in sort of a more casual fabric, like a hop sack. And then one I would have more um, in a more like dressy one. So you could wear it casually and then you have another suit that you could wear for more dressy occasions. Your most comfortable watch that you wear? The Nautilus 5711. What is your workout routine, if you have one? Well, right now I'm trying to fit things in when I can because we just got a new puppy and it's very overwhelming to us. So right now I'm just uh, doing running. But typically before we had this change in our lives, I, I go to the gym and it's, it's like a... I have a personal trainer. His name's Rick Katoof. Team Katoof is uh, his company. I used him when I was a bicycle racer. Just next level dude, very positive. Um, it's typically like a lot of, it's a variety of stuff. So it's like uh, body weight only, free weights. I do a lot of uh, rowing, stair climber. I mean, it's, it's like total body kind of stuff. So um, yeah, I try to go well, I was going six times a week. Now it's when I can and I have the energy. So we're going to try to get it back up to like four or five times a week. What's your go-to color combination? <clears throat> I mean, I'm very classic. This is blues, grays, and browns. What was the first fashion brand you fell in love with and why? I guess when I sort of was getting into... Uh, he spoke style the one that was mostly along my personal style and attainable and and like close was actually two now that I'm thinking about it 
there's J. Crew because it's like classic and sporty, and then there was Brooks Brothers, which was more sort of old school, classic, dressed up, you know, dapper style. Uh, wardrobe suggestions for a tech startup job? I normally wear jeans or chinos <clears throat> with untucked shirts. Hmm. I would clean that up um, and add in maybe some like dark denim, either black or like dark indigo. Um, I mean, the untucked shirt, like if it's a work shirt, like a like a cool denim work shirt or like a shirt in a, a nice wool for the winter, that looks cool. Um, I would throw in some turtlenecks also and um, get a few pairs of like cool sneakers, like a minimal white common projects or uh, uh, comparable brand and uh, maybe something in, in like a, a light beige suede could be cool also. What's your advice for people who want to start their sartorial journey? Hmm. <clears throat> be patient. Find people uh, whose style inspires you and don't just think that like you can run to the mall and acquire all of the clothing that they have because that's not how it works especially especially if it's like more if you say like you say sartorial or dapper style or dressed up like that it takes time to to build a wardrobe so i guess be patient is the main thing and and be uh make a list and like make a checklist i need a navy suit i need a gray suit i need these five shirts you know and then and then just gradually work to to uh, ha get those things in your closet. Did I just miss it? Or when will you show us your new house? Oh, man. We will. No, we will eventually. It just uh, We moved from a 900 square foot apartment to a pretty big house, the studio tour. I don't, I don't know if we by the time we do this video of the studio tour it'll be up or not, but we'll show you the studio, which is the basement of the house. But at a certain point, we will show the rest of the house, but there's we're sort of like missing a lot of furniture. There's a lot of empty space right now. So once we get it to more, uh, more of a place where it's settled, there'll be a house tour for sure. Just turned 18, looking for a watch to make this birthday feel special. Any recommendations? Hmm. I mean, it depends on your price point. For 18 year old, um, I would say Seiko 5. You really can't go wrong with that. Or a classic Seiko diver. It's the best watch for the price. Was it pro cycling that started your love of style slash visits to Europe? No, I wasn't a pro cyclist. I was like an elite amateur, but I did love watching the pros. And like the pros, when I was like really getting into cycling, like really had a lot of flair. It was like less clinical. Now nowadays cycling is so clinical, but uh, people like, like uh, Mario Cipollini, who's this like famous Italian sprinter, was always like really wild. He always wore these really wild outfits to uh, the Tour de France, and I feel like the old school guys had a certain like panache about them that uh, you don't see as much anymore. But there are still some of the guys like Philippe Gilbert has a lot of uh, panache and style as well. But no, nah, I don't know. There's there's definitely a style element to cycling, but it's very different than what I'm doing now. What do you think about birth year watches? Awesome idea. I have one myself. Uh, my uh, GMT Master 1675 is from my birth year. Very cool uh, collecting idea. Describe your house style. Uh, by, by that I mean soft, structured, gorge height, lapel width. <laughs> so what do I like best when it comes to like shoulders, stuff like that? It changes depending on the the setting or you know where I'm currently at in my journey um, I was liking very soft tailoring for a while so no padding in the shoulder very unstructured um, but like for my wedding I wanted a lot more structure so um, yeah it depends shoes brands what are your favorite I think Allen Edmonds are a great shoe for the price point I think Carmina shoes are great also for the price point. Um, if you want to step it up into a different level, I would say that Alden is the way you should go. But, uh, and then, I mean, after Alden, you're getting into like stratospheric kind of, kind of price points with like Edward Green and, and other uh, shoemakers like that. So, What did you think of the Phillips-styled auction? 
I think it's a really cool idea. It's a really neat way to show, I mean, because there's like, like all of these things kind of connect. Like, so the Philips styled auction was an auction that Philips watches did in collaboration with Mr. Porter and the rake. So they had watches that they were auctioning off and then they were styled um, by those other two organizations. And I think that's really cool because it shows like um, the way that watches can be worn and not just like appreciated as objects too. I think that's one of the things that um, people wonder about like, well, can I wear like a Submariner with a suit or can I, can I do this or can I do that? And that's one of the things we're doing. We're trying to um, also do with the uh, watch styling videos that we just started. Best advice to stay on trend without breaking the bank. Master student here. <laughs> stay on trend without breaking the bank. The best way to stay on trend is to not stay on trend. I'm not big on trends at all. Fashion trends especially are a great way to just throw your money away. So, you know, I'm a proponent of classic style. I, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up trends here and there, but generally like there's a distinction I think between a fashion trend and a trend in menswear or tailored clothing. Trends in menswear you can generally pull off with items that you already have in your closet. It's not something that you have to go and drop $500 on to have this particular sneaker or whatever it happens to be. So. Uh, it has to speak to you and you have to feel comfortable with it too. Planning to get my first <clears throat> Leica. Any recommendations? Leica Q, or if you can afford it, I would get the M10. You said you'll be doing an outerwear collection video. It's Fabian from YouTube, by the way. Oh, hey Fabian. I don't think I know, I don't think we know each other. But uh, yeah, I did say that. We'll get to it, hopefully, before it's not cold anymore. <laughs> Do you own a barber waxed jacket? If not, would you consider investing in one? I do not. Um, yes, I would consider investing in one. What are the determining factors when you purchase any piece of clothing? Hmm. Will I wear it? Uh, actually, how many different ways can I wear it? If I can wear it like five different ways, definitely. If I can only think of one way to wear it, unless it's something special like, like a a velvet jacket or something, then I won't buy it. It's also got to be good quality. Turtleneck tucked in with a suit or left out? Either. It, it can work either way. Um, if you are going to tuck it in, though, I would say make sure that you do not have belt loops, that you have side adjusters. Best everyday watch in the five to $7,000 range. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I am going to say... And this is actually a little under 5K. I'm going to say a Nomos. Um, the Zurich I really like. It's very minimal. It's, it's very highly regarded, um, classic looking, very versatile. What is the first watch you owned? What got you into watches? The first watch I owned was... I believe a fake Gucci watch with the like red and green stripe purchased on Canal Street <laughs> during a high school trip to New York City. Nice. <laughs> nice. What's your favorite non dress watch? Non dress watch? Uh, the Datagraph. Where do you see the HSS shop in five? Hmm. Wow. We have some stuff coming up that could be uh, really sort of alter the course of it. So I can't say too much about it now, but it could it could be in a very different place in five years. Who makes your wedding band? Ah, that's a good question. No one's ever asked that. Um, it's a Tiffany and Tiffany wedding band. It's uh, six millimeters and it has a uh, mill grain around the side. It's in yellow gold. Um, they had to actually, it didn't, it was in, you could either get it in platinum or white gold, but I wanted yellow gold. So they had to like pour this like specially for me. Um, I love it. Why do you think men are getting too underdressed nowadays? Hmm. I would think, I think that like, it's sort of like switching over, like guys are really understanding, um, 
like putting more time into thinking about it. So maybe a few years ago I would agree with that sentiment, but I don't know. I think mostly it's it's easy. It's easy to like just roll out of bed and throw on a t-shirt and jeans and, you know, Rob's raising his hand. <laughs> Thinking of getting my first ever custom double-breasted suit. Any pointers? Find some pictures of ones that you like, and then when you go to wherever you're going to get it, bring those pictures so they can see what you're after. Can you do a video on white tie? If I ever acquire white tie um, stuff, yeah, definitely. But I don't, I, I don't own that. Can you describe the very next picture on your camera roll? <laughs> that looks like a fire blazing in my fireplace and my dog sitting in front of it. Is that correct? Yes. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> there we have it. If you made it this far, uh, thank you. I hope that was fun for me to do. And, uh, you know, if you want to do more of this in the future, leave all those comments down below. Um, if you like the video, obviously, give it a thumbs up. Um, hit that subscribe button. I've been talking for so long, I forget what I say, but until next time, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys, and stay tailored.